Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, do we have a packed show today. Tim Tebow in overtime and the rest of the playoff games. We're also talking college basketball, NBA, and of course, we're looking ahead to the national championship game tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, ESPN. It's a 50-50, but I'm going Bama. This is Double H Radio. Let's get right into the action. Tim Tebow in overtime against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Started out somewhat rough. Two or three and outs. No points in the first quarter. But uh, he regained himself in the second quarter. Leading the Broncos to 20 points against the Steelers defense. And um, <laughs> it was quite a showing. What an ending. We will get to that soon. Let's start with the question that has been raised since maybe two weeks ago. Ben Roethlisberger, with that ankle, will it limit his mobility? And the answer was yes, it did. In my opinion, they should have rested him in San Francisco, and they definitely should have rested him against Cleveland. No need to play him. You knew you were going to get the five seed. The Ravens had the division locked up. I mean... (laughs) <laughs> you would rather have a healthy Ben Roethlisberger on the road. I mean, I'm not sure why they played him, and it, it ended up being costly. Tim Tebow uh, got the best of him, threw for 316 yards. Obviously the best game of the season. You know, John Elway this week said, you know, he's got to pull the trigger, and he did. A couple of huge plays out of the gate. That really got the Denver fans going. They put some points on the board. The Steelers made a run at it late. And they were close to winning for a second. If it wasn't for that Denver D late in the game, (laughs) the Steelers might have kicked the field goal to win. Uh, And, of course, the new overtime rules obviously did not come into effect this game as the Broncos ended it on the first play 80 yards and just complete jubilation in Denver. I mean, people were going insane. And um, <laughs> I bet tons of people around America were T-bowing after that play. What a phenomenal finish. And um, now I guess there's no question that he will be the starting QB next season. Everybody was talking about Brady Quinn and how if Tebow had a bad game, he'd be coming in and uh, become the starter. Yeah, that's not happening anymore. John Elway's going with Tebow. You you can't have a guy lead you to a win like that in the playoffs and not start him. So I think Denver has found their quarterback of the future. We got tons. We got the other three playoff games to talk about. Let's, uh, Let's go to the Giants and Falcons. Giants take care of the Falcons at home 24-2. I mean, what a showing by the defense. You don't give up any points. I mean, that's just terrific Giant D. And, of course, people were worried at the beginning because the Giants were not moving the ball and they couldn't score. But uh, Eli got the job done. And finally, the Giants running game showed up to play. And, you know, I think that's going to be a big part of it coming down the stretch. You know, you got to go to Lambeau. I'm going to assume it's going to be freezing. Probably not as cold as it was during the 2007 game. But uh, it'll be pretty cold down in Lambeau. And so if Ahmad Bradshaw, you know, if that offensive line can get going and you open up the play action, I think this team is a legitimate Super Bowl contender. And, of course, as long as that defensive line just keeps playing out of their mind and is getting to the quarterback, you know, I don't see any reason why they can't make a run at the title. And uh, they're just playing great. Eli's having the best the best season of his career, and uh, (laughs) they still got a lot of football left. Um, Saints and Lions, pretty much as expected. Probably the only game that went as everybody thought it would go. Somewhat of a shootout. Saints put up 45 points against the Lions D, and, you know, in the second half, Drew Brees was just picking his spot, you know, 
he he was on fire, could not be touched. Late uh, slinging it in there. I mean, it was it was fun to watch. And the Lions will be back, no doubt about it. Great young team, great offense. Um, they'll be back. But, you know, it's hard to win in the Superdome. Not many teams can do it. And the Saints are a perfect 9-0 this year in the Dome. Finally, Texans in Cincinnati. Houston Texans blow out Cincinnati 31-10. And the battle of rookie QBs, it was TJ Yates all day. No turnovers. Andy Dalton threw three picks, was hassled the entire game. And, uh, and you know, they had, they had most of the momentum during the first half. But that pick six that J.J. Watt intercepted and took it to the house really got them rattled, really set the Houston fans on fire, and um, gave the Texans huge momentum going to the locker room. If that play doesn't happen... It's 10-10 going into the locker room. Bengals have complete momentum knowing that they moved the ball the entire first half and uh, could have changed the outcome of the game. In my mind, that was the turning point. The J.J. Watt interception, rookie out of Wisconsin, the number 11 pick. Boy, was it a great one for Houston. And, of course, Arian Foster. Nothing but greatness. Two touchdowns, 40-yarder towards the end of the game to just ice it. I mean, he played great. In my mind, he's the best running back in the league. No doubt about it. Doesn't run with great speed, but runs with great power and just tremendous vision. And, uh, man, he, he was just phenomenal. If the Texans keep it up, this is no easy game for Baltimore. Not an easy game. Texans D playing well, and if the offensive is rolling and TJ Yates doesn't make any mistakes and keeps the turnovers limited... I think it's going to be a close one with the Ravens. Uh, a, just a crazy weekend in the NFL, and of course it ends with Tebow throwing the 80-yard touchdown to end it against the Steelers. That's what a phenomenal weekend! I can't wait for next weekend. Let's uh, let's move into the NBA, who was probably overshadowed this weekend by the NFL. Uh, D Wade still out, third straight game missed. But the Heat continue to roll. And uh, LeBron, LeBron's playing outstanding right now. I don't think there's a better team. I think they're the best team in the league. Um, when they get into transition, there's nobody better. LeBron, with power and speed, he gets up and down the floor in about two or three dribbles. I mean, it's phenomenal how quick he is. And, just, and he just throws it down in your face. You have no shot. You know, if... LeBron and D-Wade are coming at you, two on one, two on two, two on two, just get out of the way, just get out of the way, they will, <laughs> they will turn you into a poster child, yes they will, uh, and my watch out player for the rest of the year is Ricky Rubio, point guard for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He has 6.7 assists per game and uh, coming off a 14 assist game against the Washington Wizards. That's big numbers. I think he will have a great year and I think he is the point guard of the future for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think they're going to stick with him and, uh, you know, he has tremendous court vision and, uh, you know, probably needs to work on his jump shot a little more. But he is phenomenal, and he's so young, turned pro at, at 14 in Spain. I mean, that's tremendous, and we're seeing why, because the passes he can make and his court vision is just, it's unstoppable. It is unstoppable. Also, a crazy weekend in, the, in college basketball, numerous upsets. Number eight, UConn. Goes down again, this time in Piscataway at Rutgers. And I think this is going to be a big lift for Rutgers. They beat number 14 Florida at home. Leading into Big East play. And then two tough losses. But then gets the W against the number 8 team in the country. And UConn. UConn's phenomenal. I think this is going to be big for Rutgers and their freshman group. Um, 
I think they'll have a strong season under Mike Rice. And it's only going to get stronger as the years go along as he's bringing in recruiting classes that are tops in the nation. Also, my top six teams, after watching the weekend, they're going to remain unchanged. I have Syracuse number one, Kentucky number two, North Carolina number three, Ohio State, even though they have two losses, you know, that Jared Selinger was out for one of them and he was out most of the game against Indiana, so I still like them at number four. Baylor, undefeated out of the Big 12. You know, Perry Jones the third, top NBA prospect. The kid is good. They're at number five, and uh, Duke rounds up my top six teams. Even though they, they're coming off the loss against Temple, they bounced back against Georgia Tech. Two tough road games. You know, they played well. The Plumlee brothers, uh, they're back at it. And, of course, Austin Rivers and Seth Curry in the backcourt, I think, they can, they're a legitimate Elite Eight Final Four team as long as uh, they get some more experience under their belt and you know, it's just a learning process for them. Now, let's get to the national title game. 8 o'clock Eastern, what we've all been waiting for. A 44-day break since Alabama last played. It's going to be fun to watch in the Superdome. <laughs> The Superdome was loud to begin with, but when you have two SEC teams coming in there to play, and one of them's LSU, uh, it's going to be phenomenal. It is going to be so loud. And even though LSU may have part home field advantage, I'm still going with Alabama. I like their offensive line to win the line of scrimmage, and I think Trent Richardson is going to have a big, a big game. You know, listen to this stat. When Bama and LSU played each other back in November, Alabama had 21 plays inside the LSU 40 and only gained four total yards. Four. So they got, you know, they were able to move the ball for a while, and then when they got into LSU zone, you, you, know, you know, they just stopped. So I think they'll be able to move the ball further this time think there will be touchdowns, hopefully, um, and I think Alabama has the edge at quarterback. I just, I just don't believe in Jeffries and Jared Lee for LSU. I think they're very average, and I think Alabama is going to win the quarterback battle and the battle at the line of scrimmage, and that's why I like them 17 to 13. They're going to beat LSU. They're going to become national champions again. Nick Saban will get his second at Alabama. Roll Tide. Everybody tune in. 8 p.m. Eastern. Tons of pregame. It's going to be a phenomenal national championship. And SEC is already locked up a sixth straight. You know That just shows how strong the conference is. All right, that'll do it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, national title to get... Tonight, I will be back Wednesday morning to talk everything post-game and everything about the game. Thanks for joining us. This is Double H Radio.